time to try setting up our own service provider. Now this is a continuation on two other videos, understanding the IOC container and understanding service providers. If you haven't watched those yet, please stop this video, go back and watch them first. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do that now. I post regular tutorials throughout the week and you don't want to miss any of them. I cover Vue.js, Adonis and other Node.js topics. So once you've done that and you're up to speed, let's get started. Okay, let's begin by getting a high level, big picture view of what we'll be doing here. And then we can drill down a little bit more into the details. So high level view. We need to create three files. The first file will be the actual class for the objects that we want to create every time we call the use function. The second file will hold our service provider. And this is how we'll hook into the register function to actually add our binding to the IOC container. So to actually add the instructions on how to create those objects within the IOC container. And the third file will hold any configuration that we need. So if you recall, when we looked at the config object in the last video, we saw how that is hardwired to look within the config directory for a special file that's just to configure our new objects. Now let's take a look at how our service will actually be used in the end and we can work our way back and you can see how everything will fulfill those requirements. So if you scroll down a little bit to the actual, to the end of this, we can see this example right here. So in the end, within our code, we want to call use BQ, which is our new, which is our, our binding, our namespace for the binding within the IOC container. We want to call use there, get back a Q object that will give us a get method, create job and save. So this get method is where I want to start. The Q object we're creating at first here is actually a wrapper around the BQ library and we'll use that wrapper to fulfill the principles that we see above. So scrolling back up, the principles we want to adhere to are basically to make it easy to create new BQs with varying configurations. We don't want the end user to worry about configuring our wrapper itself, meaning configuring the view provider. And we want all of our configuration to live within the q.js file. So let me reword this a little bit. The Q provider itself, we don't want to worry about configuring. Okay, it should just work. What we do want to configure are the new BQ queues that we create using our service provider. And those configurations should be not within the code when we call use, but they should be within the config slash Q file. So you remember when we looked at the config object before with the view provider, we saw that the configurations lived within objects and their properties. So basically the q.js file will be one big object and on that object we'll have sub objects that will hold all the configurations for any BQ instance that we actually create. So going back down here, what we've done here, we've created our queue, which is our service provider. And on that provider, we are able to call, or on that object, we're able to call get. We're passing in a string. That will be uh, searching out for the specific configuration we want for the BQ that we'll create. So get will grab that configuration, create a new BQ instance, and return it. On that, then, we're able to call create job and save, etc. If you jump over to the BQ documentation, you'll see under creating queues, you'll see a new queue is created like this with a string, and you have an option to pass in a, configura a configuration object. Once you have it, you're able to create jobs and save, etc. So let's jump into the code now and see how this is being accomplished. We'll go to our index.js because this is our wrapper around BQ. When we call use, we're creating this object for the first time and we have access to a get method. And that's all there is on this class. We only have a single method, get. And we're passing in a name. So in our example here, we passed in the name addition. And that name first refers to the instance that was just created and stored later on here within a queues pool. So if this new instance right here has already been created, then it'll just return it. Otherwise, 
we reach into our config directory, we grab the configuration that matches that name, so Q file, right here I already created it, should have a property on that object named addition. So let's go here and I already created it. We have our addition configuration or elsewhere in the documentation there's one for uh, let's see subtraction so that would look like this. We create another subtraction oh, like that. So we have our other configuration like that. So it reaches into the config directory, it grabs our configuration and at this point we're ready to new up actual BQ instance. So we're creating a new BQ using the name that was just passed in, that same name is used for the configuration property and that config that was just retrieved that is passed in as well. So there we are, we're housing our configuration in a single file, the q.js, but we can access that in our code when we use the get method. So all of that happens under the hood. We're grabbing the right configuration and giving our new BQ a name. And then we store that for when we call it later on and then we return it. So that's all that's happening right there. Now let's take a look at provider.js and we'll see how we're actually adding this to the IOC container once our providers are registered uh, when the app starts up. So we extend our service provider just like we did in the view provider and the app provider. Hopefully you took some extra looking at that. You'll see that we extend the service provider. That gives us the register method and a boot method. We don't need boot in this case. We only need register. We're giving our entry in the IOC container a namespace. We're passing in our closure. This is a singleton. So we only need to create one instance of our wrapper. BQ will be returned numerous times. We'll be creating numerous um, instances of BQ and we're storing those as well right here in our queues pool. But the actual wrapper itself, we only need one of them. We don't need to create it multiple times. So we create one using the singleton function. Uh, we pass in our config and that's it. And we store it. Now in the documentation you'll see that it's actually written like this. Okay, with the require statement made inline. This just means that you're requiring the index file in the current directory. So I wrote it out like this just so you could see that it's precisely the same as requiring index like that <clears throat> and using it down there. It's the exact same thing. Now that we've done all that, we have to make sure that the application can find the new provider that we've just created. Now when the app first starts up, server.js is the first file that gets called. And you'll see here that we have the igniter class working to bootstrap the application. Now within the Fire HTTP server procedures, there is a place where all of our, uh, our new service providers are registered. So the register function is called on each, and then the boot methods on each are called. Now, to make sure that our service provider is in the list of providers that are being called, we have to add it to a provider's array. And this is found in the start directory in the app file right here. So you see at the very top, there's a provider's constant and it's an array. So we just have to add our new provider to this array. And our provider is here at provider.js. And if you go to the documentation, you can see that this is how we can add it by using path we can find the providers directory and this is the one that we created right here. It's showing up just below my node modules and the queue directory here and then the provider.js. Now my provider.js has a capital P so you'll want to change this from lowercase to capital and that's it. So now when the uh, application bootstraps it will run through this array of providers calling register on each of them and ours will now be included in that. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions about this example at all, please post it down below the video. If this helped you, please let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe.